<sighs> stress. It is the ultimate silent killer. Learning how to regulate your stress, both through the up and down periods, is going to be imperative if you wish to live a long and healthy life. So in today's video, we're gonna break down three different techniques you can employ when you are feeling stressed or just looking for a new way to relax. Real quick, before we jump into the video today, if you're new around here, my name is Mark, and this is a channel that is dedicated to both health and lifestyle optimization. If that's something you're interested in, then consider hitting that subscribe button below. Now, the first technique to reducing stress in the body is to go over some form of conscious breathing. Now, there are many different formats to breathing, but the one that I typically employ is the two-third, one-third relationship to ideally put myself into a more relaxed and restorative state. The easy mode version to this is simply just laying on your back, putting your hands on either side of your abdomen, and just starting to take small, gentle breaths into the abdomen for about two thirds, with the remaining one third going into your rib cage. Following the inhale, you're simply just going to exhale, release all the air from your body, and then just repeat that entire cycle again. Ideally with this breath, we're focusing on about a four to six second inhalation, and then a six to eight second exhalation with the inhale coming in through the nose and the exhale coming out either through the nose or the mouth. I find that by exhaling through my mouth, I can get a little bit more of a deep exhale. And the more that I can put myself almost into a exhalation state, the more relaxed I tend to feel. What you can couple this with is one of my favorite devices, which is the heart math. This is a device that you simply just clip up to your ear and you link it up to your phone and it's gonna measure your heart rate variability while you're actually going through any type of breathing technique. Now I've done an entire video already on the heart math which you can find up here or here and I will link you to that. But the gist of it is getting used to breathing consciously and getting an idea of what our heart actually feels like when we're going through our different breathing cycles. What's great about this is it's going to give you almost instant feedback as to when you're going into what they call a high level of coherence. And I have found, just from my own experience, that when they say I'm in a high level of coherence, I feel very present and very relaxed simultaneously. This is a great state to be in, one that I tend to struggle to operate from all the time. Not that I think you probably should be there all the time, but I think it is a great way to practice and objectively see how well it is that you are breathing. The second technique to reduce stress is to employ meditative walking. This is something that I just recently started doing. Instead of just sitting down and trying to go through a meditation practice, I thought, why not try to apply movement or motion to it as well? So what I'll do is I'll go out to a place such as this in nature, or even just take a midday break where I just go for a walk totally unplugged. There's gonna be no cell phone, no form of distraction, it's simply me just walking and trying to remove myself kind of from that self dialogue that I have constantly going on in my head. I find by employing some type of meditative practice while I'm walking, I actually get some of my best creative work done. Even though it's not me putting conscious energy into a problem or a particular area that I'm trying to work on, I find that just by employing walking and just letting my mind kind of go through this endless filtration system that I get some of my best thinking done. The idea here, much like a lot of meditation practices, is just to observe. I just try to focus on putting one foot in front of the other and first start just by kind of tuning into my body and just getting an idea of what my body feels like in that present moment. From there, I start to build on my layers of perception, first starting with my body and then starting to look at the outside world and just taking note of my surroundings, more or less. I'm not trying to cast any judgments. I'm not trying to overly think about anything, but more or less just take in my surroundings and see them for what they are. And it's almost as if I'm trying to take in my surroundings from a third person perspective. As if, if I'm looking at a tree, what does the tree see if it's looking back at me? This is what Sam Harris would call looking at the one who is looking. I find that by employing my conscious breathing alongside my meditative walking, 
to be two great techniques to reduce my stress. And those are easy, kind of quantifiable ones that you can go out and be action-oriented around on a day-to-day -day basis. But this last technique may be something that you're not all that familiar with when it actually comes to reducing your stress. The third and final technique to reducing stress in your body is to know your why. I think when it comes to stress, a lot of it is because of the endless checklists, the endless amount of tasks that we have to get done or are just kind of lingering in the back of our mind. I know especially for myself, I tend to always stack my schedule way too full to the point where by the end of the day, I felt like I got half of it done and I'm twice as overwhelmed as I was initially. This typically isn't a recipe for success. So something I've been coming back to is why am I doing this in the first place? What is it that I'm actually going to be accomplishing or working towards by doing said thing? And I have found that by revisiting my why, I've been able to reduce my tasks by about 50%. And that in of itself is a big burden off my shoulders. Not only is this a big burden off my shoulders, but regrounding myself in my why is also highly motivating and reinvigorating as to why it is that I am doing a certain thing. I think if you are stressed, this is a great place to come back to. Get back to understanding what are the fundamental reasons why you are trying to accomplish a certain thing. What are the reasons behind trying to accomplish that? And why is that something that is important to you? Because at the end of the day, we all have the same amount of time in a given day. And energy is by far your most precious resource. So where you decide to delegate that is ultimately gonna determine your future outcomes. So come back to your why. And I would recommend doing so often. I've found in my own experience that coming back to my why has been one of the most regrounding and recentering experiences I've had. So stress is a multifactorial subject with many variables at play. I think in part, it's important to look at the mechanisms behind stress, such as your diet, your lifestyle, certain habit choices as an example, and have ways to try to optimize these different systems. But I also think it's important to look at the person behind the stress and try to look at our own perception of what it is that is happening in front of us. Because what I have found is sometimes it's our perception of something that actually creates the stress cycle itself. So take these techniques and employ them and try different hats on for size to see what works for you. Throughout this process, see if you can be holistic in your approach and not just get dependent on one technique or the other. Because ideally we are trying to create balance and harmony. And I think it's when we are in harmony with ourselves as well as the people around us that stress truly fades away.